Hi, it's Jan Beta, and today we have this Amiga power supply. I already took out the screws, and yeah, they're basically in the um, top part of the case here. This is the bottom part, and um, as you can maybe see, this cap here, it's a 400 volts, um, 47 microfarad cap. It just began smoking, and this whole thing still worked, but this, um, yeah, this basically gave up. I think it's the only thing that's broken in here. I hope so, at least. Um, everything else I measured around a bit seems fine. So I bought replacement capacitors. I bought two of them in case uh, something was wrong, and they are not that expensive. They are. I think I paid three euros delivered or something like that. It's like one euro for one capacitor, I think. These are ultra low ESR um, Panasonic type, quite good caps. So I hope this one is the only cap that's not a, um, a good brand one in this whole thing. All the other ones are Nichicon or what is this? Nip Nippon Chemicon. Um, yeah. So I guess that's why this failed. And it's also, I think it's only 85 degrees rated. These are 105 degrees Celsius rated. So let's, um, let's take this whole um, circuit board out and see. And always be careful with um, caps that have a high voltage rating because they basically hold the voltage. They are like batteries, as you might know. And you can get uh, shocked by touching the, the pins here. So what I always do is to discharge them before I work on them. So I have to do with um, bigger sized caps quite a lot, working on audio stuff and old receivers and um, amplifiers. So I built this, which is basically, it's a banana plug that is um, coated with um, heat shrinking tube here. And this is like a crocodile clip and yeah, it's a lead. And in here is a resistor, a ceramic one that is 10 watt or something like that. It's a ceramic resistor with a quite little ohms uh, rating. So little resistance only to um, discharge uh, capacitors. So that's what I'm going to do. Attaching this to both pins and holding it on there for a second or two. Or, yeah. Make sure you you really touch the, the contacts. Then we can measure if there's any voltage left in the end. So let's see. What's DC? No, and as you can see, no, you can't see it. As you can see, it's zero point something. So nothing that will bite us. So let's uh, desolder this and put in a new capacitor, shall we? So again, I'm too lazy to get my um, desoldering pump out. So I'm just gonna do the, the wiggling thing. And what happens most of the times if I do this, uh, no, this isn't. Some of these bigger capacitors are glued to the board, but this, I'm just pulling it out from the other side, um, one side at a time, and I'm heating the pads. There we go. It's, oh, it's one of those snap-in types. So as you can see, it, yeah, as I told you, it, it, um, it smoked and stuff, and then I cut the, the mains. Um, by turning it off, but it's clearly, it's near, nearly exploded. I just turned it off in time, I guess. So this is clearly gone. Um, yeah, let's clean up the solder joints here and solder in the new one. Yeah, it should have used another um, tip on my soldering iron. I still have a very tiny tip here, but I didn't think of it. And 
Then I heated it up and yeah. Basically we're gonna use this one, but it works fine. As you can see maybe. So take one of the new ones and try to fit it in there. So in this case the negative is marked by this uh, black thing. Often the, the positive is um, marked on boards like these. So letting these a bit. In this case it's the negative and the negative is also what's um, yeah if you don't know in case you didn't see you know this it's always marked on these electrolytic caps it's always the negative that has the big stripe and sometimes there's a little minus sign on there to make clear that it's the negative side so yeah let's solder this in I guess. So yeah, and that should be, hopefully, it, I guess. Let's see. And then I clip the leads. So I clip the leads. Very huge um, leads here. So that's our board here, with the new cap. Quite the same size, except I didn't know that it was a snap-in uh, type. Um, insert the screws there. This is screwed down with four little screws, two of which have um, rings around them. And I guess it's the ones that are marked with a ring. At least I hope so. I didn't. Yeah, I think so. They are a bit longer and have a little ring on them. So there we go. I'm gonna leave out the screws for a moment and uh, test it on my Amiga 500. So I set up my Amiga 500 here. Um, by the way, this has nothing to do with the um, very controversial um, change of uh, capacitors in my Amiga 1200, which you can see on the side here which is running off a totally different uh, power supply. So this power supply just went boom on an Amiga 500 and I hope to have repaired it now with uh, changing the cap there. So nothing to do with the ceramic caps, so before you comment on this, uh, yeah. This is another power supply and I hope it works. And yeah, for all the Amiga fans, I had it running without the Amiga, and it didn't explode. Yeah, I can't really, with my um, setup here, I can't really measure if there's any um, current coming out there because it's a switching power supply and it only ever, um, yeah, it basically switches on if you um, connect a load to it. So the load in this case is the Amiga 500. And yeah, I'm pretty sure it's gonna work. And yeah, so, Let's turn this on, I guess. So yeah, there we go. The Amiga just started. Sorry about the wrong aspect ratio there. I know some people hate that, but I just have this attached to my um, monitor, quick and dirty. So just to have a picture there. So let's start up something, I guess. I'll um, boot up some workbench disk or something. Yeah, I had this on for some hours now, actually. And it's barely warm. So I guess that was the fault in this one. And yeah, I seem to have fixed it. You never know. Um, these switching power supplies are really hard to um, repair and troubleshoot normally. But I guess this one just failed because it was a cheap cap. So, yeah. These um, don't fail very often. M quite more often it's, it's the little caps that fail in uh, these switching power supplies, but sometimes the bigger ones fail as well. Um, yeah. 
probably probably most likely if they are not a good brand one so always get good branded electrolytics it's really worth the money most of the time because they last way longer if you excuse me i'll have to uh, test this for a while i guess so thanks for watching if you want to get in touch uh, support me or stuff like that you find links in the video description you'll find links in the end screen comment share this give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel thanks for watching hopefully see you again on this channel i'm your beta thanks bye <laughs> and now for some speedball